In this video, I am going to show you how you can work with a search with result element. So first in the add menu, I will look for the search elements. So there's a regular search bar and the search with results element. I will drop it on the page and include the variables that come with it. So we have a collection of addresses, search results and items selected. So let me place the component on the page. And now I can see that I have in my data tab a few variables. So a collection of addresses where I can look for John Doe, for example, or Jane Smith or Sarah Lee. An object with the item selected, which is currently empty. And search results, an array, a list of search results, which is also currently empty. In fact, let me make things clearer by enabling the filter on the current page. So we only see the variables and collections being used on the page. Now in preview mode, if I type in Jane and look at the values, the current values of my variables, I can see that. So my collection of addresses is static, but here I have an array of search results and if I remove a couple of letters, now I have several results. If I type in Bob, I have different results. If I type in B on its own, again, I have different results. Now, if I click on Bob, the item selected variable is updated. So let's see how this works. In my layout, if I select this here, I see the result is bound to this text. So it's taking a JSON and formatting it. So you could say item selected and then refer to the variable item selected. Or you could remove this and just say item selected. Bob Johnson. So here you can format this, the result, the item selected in whatever way you want. You could, uh, in fact, you could add a container around it, put it inside a container, uh, add some padding, a background color. You, you can style this in any way you want. You can remove it completely. Maybe you don't want to display um, this information. Okay, now see this, the result search container is currently hidden. So this is in the settings, the conditional rendering. So it only renders, this container will only render on the page if the search input value is uh, longer than zero characters. So if I go to preview, mode and type in Jane, then suddenly it is rendered because the length of the search input value is higher than zero. So if I remove this, the text length is four, so it's higher than zero. Okay, so now let's say that instead of uh, looking through a list of addresses that is fixed, uh, let me remove this because that has got nothing to do with my project. And instead, on the search input, I will look at my workflow, so how the search works. And what it does is that on change, so when something changes in the input, when a user types in a letter interacts with the input or you know deletes a letter then we return a value the value from the input and the value is the event value on change you don't need to change this it's it comes by default with the element then we also search for the name and addresses so in our array. So we just deleted the, the array of addresses. What we can do is bind 
to our own collection data. So here, for example, I have a list of characters from an API. I can bind to this array and I need to bind to an array, a list of items. And now I will say the filter will be that uh, the name inside each object. So the name contains the value from the input result. So the value from this, the first action. If, um, if it contains this value, it will be, um, it will be included here. And in my search results, I will update uh, the array of search results with the value from action two. So from search for name and addresses. So let me rename here my action search for name in characters. So my collection is called characters. There we go. And now this refers to search for name and characters. So you see this, it's, it will be this result. Let's see if this works. Rick, there we go. So now we see all the results from our Rick and Morty uh, characters collection. And if I select Rick Sanchez, it will update the text here. Now I can also update the placeholder here. So instead of saying search for Jane or John, um, I can say search Rick and Morty characters. And maybe on the page then, I, m I w might want to display more results. So let's have a container with the selected character. And in there, there will be a heading, a couple of text elements, or actually maybe labels instead. I will have a label in here. And another one, I will put them inside a container. Oops. This container. So labels. And I will also have an image. I want to make sure it's inside my selected character. And let's put it here. Let's put the heading here. And there we go. So now I have this information inside the selected character. I will put all of this inside the container. Or actually, I can use a shortcut. So to group uh, selected elements, it's command G. So I'll select these two and do command G and now they're inside a flex box. Okay, I will say it's vertical and there is a row gap of 24, 36. And here my selected characters, I will say they're centered. My labels are horizontal and my image has a fixed width of 400. Okay. And now here on the heading, I can bind to my selected, the item selected. So Rick Sanchez is alive and human and looks like this. So search with results. And here is my image. Right. So now if I look for another, so here, for example, maybe I don't, I don't need this anymore. I don't care about this result anymore. And there I will say, no, there's no Jane. Um, 
what can Morty characters can I look for? So Morty Smith, Alan Rails. All right, let's go with Alan. And if I select Alan, there he is. And now something that I want might want to customize as well is here. I have a little icon uh, for um, because it's it could be for locations or anything. But here, instead of an icon in my layout, I could have an image. Let's have it here and have a fixed width of 30 and a radius of 100. And here I will bind to the context, so the image of the current um, the current item and remove this icon. And I can customize this further. Maybe this side, the results should be semi-bold. So now if I look for a different character, I have their names and image. If I want to continue customizing, I can go on the search input um, and, for example, add uh, different borders. So instead, you know, I could add, I don't know, blue border, a bluish border and have a radius of eight. And maybe I want the width to be fixed. So let's say 400. There you go. And maybe I also want this to be centered. That's it. That's how you can use the search with result element.